Now today we're installing Brembo brake pads along with Bosch rotors. This happens to be a 2006 Acura, but you can really follow this guideline for most vehicles out there. We'll start with the front, then jump to the rear. Now if you're familiar with this channel, you know that I always use just basic hand tools. So I have a breaker bar with a 19 millimeter socket and let's just break the lugs loose. So now I'll be jacking up the vehicle from the front cross member and that will allow both front wheels to come off the ground. And then I have two jack stands along both frame rails and then we can lower the jack here. So let's start with the basics in case this is all new to you. Right here is the brake rotor. You have a brake pad here. There's another brake pad on the opposite end and this is your caliper. So on the bottom we have a fastener which will remove and then the entire assembly will simply rotate up and there's a little pin in here that we can simply slide the entire assembly out of the way. Now this is a 14 millimeter fastener. They usually are on many many vehicles. And then I'm just using a carpenter's hammer just to make this loose instead of banging up your hands. You know, don't go crazy doing something like that. Okay. All right. This slides out. And before I do that, let me grab a bungee cord. Now I have a bungee cord because I don't want the caliper to hang from the brake hose. It can snap, rip, and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to slip this over the front spring. Okay, this comes out like so. And then I'm just going to simply, I'm not sure if you can see this. I'll have to readjust the camera, just give me a second. So now I have the bungee cord holding on the caliper bracket, okay? So you're not putting a lot of strain on the brake hose. And right here is your brake pads. That's just, a, this is a shim. You could take this off if it comes off first. That's okay, the new ones will include new shims. And certainly a good time to replace these. Okay, and also there's new hardware with the new brake pads as well, so you can remove these. There we go. And now I need to remove the caliper bracket. Now take a look at the rear. You'll find two fasteners. One is up here, another one is right there. And then we can remove, oops, remove the bracket from the vehicle. Now these fasteners are quite tight, so 17 millimeter, which they usually are, 17 millimeter wrench. There's a Craftsman, again, you want good quality tools. And then I'm using a three pound hammer to hit against the wrench. Okay, make it as easy and simple as possible. Power tools, of course it does help, but in tight spots, you can just use simple hand tools. So right here is the top one. Now we just need to loosen the bottom one. Again, grab your wrench, three pound hammer, and here we go. Now quite often the most challenging part is removing the rotor from the hub. Most rotors you'll find two openings and these openings allow a six millimeter machined fastener to be inserted and you just rotate the fasteners until they strike the hub and pushes back the rotor. By far the easiest thing to remove rotors. If you don't have these fasteners or these openings then you can hit the circumference with a heavy hammer or you can even try pulling the rotor off the hub, which we have a separate video showing how, but this is by far the easiest way. Again, they're always 99% of the times six millimeter fasteners, 
and just turn them clockwise and the rotor will be pushed right off the hub. Super, super simple. Okay, so here we go. And you can see it's already loose. By far the easiest thing to remove rotors. Okay, done deal. And since you're here, you can quickly take a look at the hub. In other words, make sure there's no free play that's not moving this way. And as you can see, this is good. It spins perfectly fine. It's hard to spin because I have the tire on the other end, but this is in good shape. And then we install a brand new rotor. Now, don't worry if it gets dirty because we're going to clean everything with brake clean at the end. And make sure, in my case, I have the Phillips size fasteners that have to line up with the drill marks in the, in the hub. Okay. You know, when you do brakes yourself, you could save quite a bit of money. And if you've never done it before, once you do it the first time, and then the second time, by the time you do the rears, it's a lot easier. Because you know the components that you're looking at. Okay. So now I'm going to reinstall the caliper bracket, but before I do that, right here, you have the cylinder inside the caliper that needs to be pushed back into its bore. Now before we do that, let's open the cap to the master cylinder. Now the master cylinder is where you insert the brake fluid. It's always, again 99% of the time, you'll find it on the firewall. So right underneath this plastic cover, I just need to remove it and this is exactly where you will find it. Again, look against the firewall. And even if you look closely, it's hard to see because the lettering is also in black, but it states brake fluid. So that's where you want to find the reservoir for the brake fluid. And I often get questioned, do you have to bleed the brakes whenever you replace the brake pads? And the answer is no, because you're not entering, no air is entering the system. If air enters the system, then yes, you have to bleed the brakes. But in a case like this, where you're just pushing back in that, that uh, cylinder in the caliper, no reason to. Now the reason why we remove the cap to the master cylinder is because when you push in this piston into its housing, you don't want a lot of pressure to build up in the master cylinder. So that's why you take off the cap and just keep an eye on the fluid, make sure it doesn't overflow. If it does, quickly pick it up, mop it up because it, it will eat away the car paint very, very quickly. Now everyone is a little bit different when it comes to pushing these in. Some people like to use very large channel lock pliers. You could purchase a tool set specifically made to push in these, these pistons. I just like a block of wood with a C-clamp. That works for me. And we'll simply just push this in. It's a little hard because the camera is in my way, but there we go. Let me move the camera out, but I'll show you in a second. Actually, I'll show you now very quickly, then I'll move the camera back. So as you can see, once I rotate the C-clamp, it's pushing in that piston. Let me move the camera back. Maybe a little hard to see this. Okay, so I'm just rotating the C-clamp here slowly. Don't do it too too quickly. And once it's perfectly flat, then you're good to go. And again, I still have the bungee cord here, which is helping me keep the caliper in place so I don't put a lot of pressure on the brake line. There you go. Remove the clamp, and I'm actually, I will show you, okay, see, completely flat. I will show you the special tool when we get to the rear, because some vehicles you need a specific tool, but that's it. This is ready to go. And as you turn the clamp, just watch the fluid. If it starts to, again, overflow, just grab it because it will eat up the paint. Now typically these fasteners are tied to at least 60 foot-pounds. I just tend, again, to use a three-pound hammer and make them nice and tight. If you want to use a torque wrench, by all means. Now the Brembo kit does include new hardware, which we will install in a moment, but off camera right here, I used a wire brush to clean this up, this contact point, and up here, and on both ends of the rotor. Uh, I'm sorry, the caliper bracket. Okay, so just clean it up. Then right here you have a sliding pin on the caliper bracket. And the kit does include lubricant. That's because this, the caliper assembly moves back and forth slightly. And uh, we need to press and let off the brake pedal. So you want to just use just a little bit of lubricant. It will prevent uh, rust, corrosion, that sort of thing. And then we're almost done with the front. So 
just a little bit. Now I quickly want to show you one more thing. Some vehicles, not every vehicle, but some vehicles you'll find a fastener right here that's holding on a bracket. You want to remove this fastener because it's going to make it really difficult to place the pin, line it up with the housing. So it's a 12 millimeter fastener. You can spray it down with WD-40 or PD Blaster before you remove it. Now once you remove the bungee cord, make sure you guys can see this, just insert the caliper into its bracket. You can leave it up like this and let's grab the brake pads. So I'm going to start by inserting the hardware into the bracket. Again, this is where we cleaned off the surface area with the wire brush and just push down. I'll come in for a close up in a moment. And then once you have the hardware installed, just use a little bit of, again, the lubricant. These are the contact points for the pads. And that allows the pads to move back and forth nice and freely. So now we're going to install the pads. As you can see, I've already installed the rear one just because you can't see really what's going on in the back. So very simply, all that you're doing is you're inserting the tab into its mount, top tab into its mount. So what I tend to do is start with the top one, press it in, line it up on the bottom, and then just press down. And there you go. That's it. And then you just slide down the entire assembly. Like so. And then insert the fastener. Again, that goes on the bottom here. And then I'll just lightly tap it with the carpenter's hammer. And then once you finish up with that lower fastener, don't forget you also have this other fastener to tighten down. And then what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to replace the front passenger side and then I'll come back and we'll take care of the rear. This is just some brake cleaning. Now for the rear, I'm just going to go a little bit quicker because it's really very, very similar to what you saw in the front. So I'll remove the caliper, the bracket, slide off the rotor, and reverse procedure. Now you want to make sure the handbrake is not on because you'll never be able to get this off. And for the caliper bracket, you have to remove both the top and the bottom one. Now, as you can see, this is rotating right here. Let me show you. Sometimes you'll find it rotating. So all that you need to do, all that you need to do is grab an adjustable wrench, place it over the fastener, and hold this in place and strike the other wrench with the hammer. There you go. Just a flathead screwdriver. I'll pry this off here a little bit. Okay, the old brake pads for the rear are still in good shape, but we'll replace them anyway. And then just remove the two fasteners, one here, another on the bottom, holding on the bracket. Now when you try to pull this off, maybe a little tight like the front, but looks like this one is pretty good. loose enough to come off. And there you go. Now sometimes you may have to, these are your park and brake shoes. Oops. There you go. So right here and right here. So when you pull up the handbrake, these move outward and hold the rotor in place. Sometimes you have to loosen these up. And I'll include a link to a separate video showing on how you do that. It's actually an entire replacement, but at the end of that video, I show on how you can back this off with a screwdriver and these can slide right out. But in my case, it's perfectly okay. Make 
these nice and tight. So just like the front caliper, we need to drive in the piston back into its bore, or the body of the, uh, of the caliper. Now this is simple enough that I could just simply push it in. Some vehicles you need a special tool. For example, Nissan Infiniti is a prime example, because what you have to do with those vehicles is, as you push in the bore, uh, the piston, you also have to rotate it clockwise and there's a very specific tool. Let me show you what that looks like. Now this is something you can often rent at your local auto parts store or you can simply purchase it as I have. Again, I'll have some links in the description box below. We simply just find the right adapter for your vehicle. In other words, you want to match up the same diameter of that uh, piston and you just simply turn the handle and it will turn clockwise and push in the piston at the same time. Really, really nice tool. Now, maybe a little hard to see because the sun is setting, but again, same exact setup as we did in the front. Just turn in the piston, watch the fluid in the master cylinder, make sure it doesn't overflow, and then we reinstall the brake pads onto the rotor, or I should say it's mount. And then again, some lubricant or brake grease on the hardware. And the brake pad indicator, this is a wear indicator, so once the brake pad reaches a certain level, it would strike this metal bracket and really screeches a super loud noise. And you want to replace your pads ASAP because eventually it will ruin your rotor if that happens. Okay. Go. And then don't forget to reinstall this little boot onto the rotor. Again, this is to adjust the handbrake. Okay. Okay, let me just clean this off and show you one last thing and we'll be all set. Now don't forget to put the cap back on the master cylinder. And then as a last step, just pump the brake pedal a few times. The vehicle is off and this will just really get those pistons out just a little bit. So. The reason why you do this is if you just start the vehicle and you hit the brake, you'll feel the brake pedal go all the way down. So just preload. You're essentially just preloading the brakes. And there you go. But I'm just going to wrap up now with the passenger side rear. And we'll be all done. So thank you for watching. Any questions, comments, please leave it below. And we'll see you next time.